Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm intending to discuss how to get around the Joule system because Joule has five moons and actually they're arrayed in a pretty convenient fashion to bounce from one moon to another and we can take a look at that but uh, before we do that we need to get Lemdorf Kerman headed back home to Kerbin and then we need to get our Gillylander situated so that it can fulfill its contract and so basically at the end of this episode I'm hoping to get all of this done uh, but uh, first we have to make sure that Lemdorf can actually get back given the fuel that he has so uh, we're about 12 hours away from the transfer point which should be close enough uh, I mean there's the phase angles after all and normally I just uh, hold a protractor up to the screen and see if it's the right angle or not so this is much more accurate than I even normally have it so it should be alright uh, let's start planning we want to head out this way because we're going to one of the inner planets compared to Duna and our the surface vel velocity we need isn't too much so we're looking at about there maybe a little bit more Okay, there is an inclination issue, though the descending node seems to be in a convenient position. Yeah. Just a little bit. So, taking a look at this, our approach is 333,000 kilometers. I'm just going to move my maneuver node a little bit this way. That makes it worse. This way. Better. But I think we can do better than that. We're aiming for preferably something inside the atmosphere of Kerbin, but we'll just go as low as we can. Nope, it's looking like about 7,000 from here, 7,000 kilometers. So this is what I get for our Delta V. So we have uh, more than enough, 1,250. Okay, we are on escape trajectory away from Duna. So, basically committed to getting back to Kerbin now. Okay, now... <laughs> okay, so what's been going on here? Alright, like that. So yeah, this is an option. You can focus view on Kerbin and see what's going on with your orbit. I think I have to take that for now. Yeah, I'll wait until we're in interplanetary space before trying to make any adjustments. Uh, we'll be done with the dual probe before this gets back. So let's just add the SOI well we'll get through this SOI change first and then we'll add the SOI change into Kerbin okay anyway I'm just gonna add the SOI change for now let's turn to the Gilly Lander okay so here we are and let's just get into Eve's sphere of influence oh wait uh, doesn't seem like we've got the right approach here Okay, Eve Periapsis 251 seems fine. We could probably get a little bit lower than that. Okay, let's just keep it there. Uh, 27 meter per second fix, so that's... Okay, well, that'll be a little bit lower than we need, but... I think we can correct that as we go in. Alright, so... On to the Eve encounter. Oh, there's Eve, whoa! I think, oh wait, 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 wait. The alarm is for the old, oh man. We flew right through Eve SOI. The alarm was for the old one. I was relying on the alarm. I sh this is why I don't usually use curb alarm clock. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we are going to have to do things a little bit more difficultly. So yeah, uh, just to explain the mistake, uh, we passed right through Eve's atmosphere, even though we were supposed to be at an altitude where 
use atmosphere would have broken our time warp. Uh, the game didn't catch that in time. And so we are headed on our way out, and that was because I changed my approach, but the alarm was still for the old approach. I don't think there's any particular point in uh, using Eve to aerobrake now. Best to try and match orbits with Gilly, perhaps. Well, maybe it'll be worthwhile. We're, we're in a pretty high orbit right now. Unfortunately, I haven't really considered my inclination. It's it, We can fix it with respect to Gilly pretty easily. Let's set Gilly as a target. We're not too far off from where we can fix it. We should have done that at the same time as we did this burn. Okay. So, well, now our jewel probe is going to be be approaching jewel in 3 days. You know what? Maybe I'll do most of this right now. Let me do this fix. We're close enough to the ascending node that's not going to make us too far off. I think I'm going to have it error break me just a little. We're just way too high. Okay. Now if I add alarm here, it doesn't have any idea. What I want is periapsis. And I'm gonna need... Well, that, that's fine. Uh, no, actually, we'll probably be entering in significantly more than three, uh, three minutes beforehand, so let's have a uh, alarm one hour before we hit periapsis. Okay, so let me head on to the Joule probe, which is just getting into Joule sphere of influence and making minor corrections. Ah yes, it looks like our Joule probe is basically the same sort of setup as our Gilly one, and that makes sense because uh, it's obviously got all that delta V, and in this case it needs it. So anyway, here is the jewel encounter. We're approaching at a good periapsis for arrow breaking, but it all depends on whether we are going in the right direction uh, because we have to make sure that we are prograde going in the same direction as jewel's moons if we want to try and meet up with any of them. It's possible that we just won't, but I, I don't see why not. Uh, all we have to do is achieve orbit around jewel and then transmit scientific data from jewel. After that, uh, going to the moons is basically free. We're not bringing this back home, I don't think. Uh, we didn't slap... No, we do have parachutes on, so maybe. But maybe we should make a lathe landing or something. Lathe is the only moon of Jewel that has an atmosphere. Um, it's the only moon that has an atmosphere. So, pretty special moon right there. But that means that we can use the parachutes to bring us into a landing. It's got a nice thick atmosphere, unlike uh, Duna, which has a thin atmosphere that won't really do the full trick. Alright, so we are going counterclockwise, which is the correct direction, and I'm just going to double check that our periapsis is okay. And I'm going to use KSB air braking calculator online in order to do that. Okay, so here I've got the view focused on Joule. And I've uh, checked it out, and indeed, 117.4 uh, kilometers is just fine, so I'm not even going to make an adjustment to our, my, my periapsis here. It is a fine periapsis, and it will hopefully bring our uh, apoapsis, uh, once we have air braked and gotten into orbit, hopefully our new apoapsis will be around the orbit of Val. And that is my intention. We could probably bring it down lower than that to like Leith, but uh, first of all, a Val, a Val app lapsus would be good. It'll make it easier to tweak the orbit in order to get a Leith encounter if you want it, or a Val encounter for that matter. But uh, for now, the important thing is we are very much approaching in the plane of the system. You can see we have very little inclination with respect to the moons of Jewel, and so that's very important. And of course we're going in the correct direction. I've messed that up uh, at least once, probably more than once. And uh, Jewel will error break us, so we're not going to have to kill our own velocity the way that we just did around Eve. Okay, so I'm going to add a new alarm, and in this case, 
uh, we are not doing an SOI change, which would be after we passed, but instead we are going to have a periapsis alarm. And once again, I'm going to go for one hour. Okay, but that's in 14 days because Joule has such a huge gravitational influence that uh, we are under its influence from a very large distance. So we have a long time to wait. Let's go back to the Gilly Lander. Now I have not checked air braking calculator on this one. Normally air braking calculator I use in order to get into orbit. We are in orbit. We're just in a very high orbit. But I, I suppose it'll work just fine. So let me let me try it out. Wow, I got really, really, really close. Actually, air braking calculator tells me that to get uh, an apoapsis around 25,000. Actually, I put 30,000 just to be safe. So an apoapsis of 30,000. I should use 84,211. I'm at 84,282-ish meters. So yeah, within 100 meters of what error breaking calculator already says. So definitely don't need to adjust this. Pretty good approximation. I'm pleased with that. All right, so let's get in. Here we go. And we can see apoapsis height still pretty steady, though dropping now. Yeah, it's dropping. Okay, pretty excellent. Uh, that's about right. Let's see. So this is the closest approach, but our target would be over here at that point. Well, it's not the prettiest thing ever. We were probably intending to bring this back. I don't know if I'm going to do that. We'll see. We've still got enough delta V to bring it back. It won't take too much to adjust this orbit into Gilly's orbit. Still take a bit though. Okay, so uh, 372. And we'll burn at Apoapsis to do that. And then we'll have a Gilly encounter there. So let's just add this maneuver node. I'm sure we will have it in time. Yeah, 22 hours, not a long time. Okay, let's go. So these are some of the strange maneuvers you can end up doing if you happen to miss your initial air breaking pass. But as long as you've got the spare delta V, you can save the situation with relative ease. All right. Oops, squiggly line trajectory there. Always wonder about that. Okay, let's see what kind of delta V we'll need to get into orbit around it. Not much, as expected. Okay, contract part one. So that should be orbits achieved. Now let's do some science when goo container should do the trick. All right, and let's transmit that data. I think I want to fulfill the contract, and if we can get this back, that's a separate issue. So, yep, that is my plan. Alright, now a ghillie landing. Want to be on the bright side. We're right on the terminator, we're right on the boundary between daylight and nighttime. So, we need a little bit of an inclination change as I did there. I think uh, 8,000 is the boundary between physical and non-physical time warp here, so I want to keep the periapsis above that. And so I'm going to be aiming for landing right around here. The trouble with Gilly is that any approach and then takeoff takes forever because of the time warp limitations. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to transmit the data. And that's because it's going to take us a while to bring this guy back. We'll have to wait until the transfer. We can add an alarm for that. Um, transfer window between Eve and Kerbin. Oops. I accidentally focused on Gilly there. Okay, yep. So that'll be 124 days. And I don't want to wait for that in order to get... Hopefully get the R&D building unlocked, which is the reason why we're building up funds. So our funds is going are going to go to unlocking the R&D building. Terrain looks to be 3,000 meters. 
So we still got plenty of height. All right, yeah. Uh, physical time over time. Actually, you know, this this plateau looks pretty good. I think it'd be a good idea to land here. Seems like a natural sort of landing spot. Okay, less than 10 seconds. Okay, no bounce. Very good. Oh, wait, wait, there's a bounce. There's a bounce. Bit of a bounce. Did that count as landing? Well, I counted as landing. Well, are we on the surface so we can do the experiments? Uh, okay, quit shimmying. Come on. Observe Mystery Goo. Uh, from the highlands, which I suppose means from the surface of the planet, so moon. Okay, yep, let's transmit. Where is our thermometer? Okay, thermometer. Well, that we can just keep for now. We've fulfilled the contract. And so we'll also keep the Science Junior. Let's keep that. That's hardly worth anything if we try and transmit it right now. Okay, so uh, we will transfer this back on that transfer point, but that's a while yet. At least we fulfilled the contract. Now let's focus on the dual probe. Actually, I lied. I, I decided I wanted to give Lemdorf a better approach to Kerbin. Unfortunately, it's still not allowing me to click on the light blue path. It's only allowing me to make a maneuver on the purple one. And of course, that would be the wrong one. So all I can do is really do some test burns to see. Huh. I'm doing control input, but I'm not getting any response. Lemdorf, you're still alive, right? Okay, we've still got power. You can see I've got pitch going there. But it's not turning. I don't have time warp. Okay, I think I should quit out of the program and restart right now. This could be dangerous. Something weird is going on. Um, okay, well now I have control. That's good. Alright, worried there for a sec. Never know these glitches. Um, unfortunately, quitting out and coming back in has not solved the problem of me not being able to make a maneuver node but at least I can do the sort of test burns that can... Yeah. Get us closer to Kerbin. We don't have to fine-tune it completely right now. In fact, just from the variation when I turn this shows that I probably shouldn't tweak it any more than this. We'll call 74 kilometers or so good enough for now. Alright, so Lemdorf is on... Uh, on a good trajectory back home and I think we'll be all right with him. Uh, we've still got his timer there but we've adjusted the orbit now so I'm gonna get rid of that timer and gonna add a new one so no more making that uh, that mistake again. All right so new SOI change timer and now we'll go to the dual probe. Okay that is weird. I could have sworn I was recording but apparently something decided that I wasn't. And, uh, well, uh, let me give you an update. Uh, I'll try and drink more coffee. But, uh, yeah, we, we air braked around Jewel. And we have air braked, and I boosted our orbit a little bit in order to get this Val encounter. Remember, the apoapsis I picked in air braking calculator was meant to hit Val's orbit. And so we've gotten this by a very minor burn at, uh, per uh, after we left Jewel's atmosphere. Sorry for not getting that recorded. That was, um, that was sort of sort of the point of this. Anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, I did a lot of talking. That I, uh, all right. Well, um, there we have it. Th th this is a rare occurrence. Me failing to record a sec section. Anyway, uh, so uh, the basic idea is that we're not in orbit around 
Juliet. I did do a GUI experiment and transmitted that. So we've done that. But what I wanted to do was, uh, the reason I noticed that I wasn't recording was because I was going to go to the contract screen to see if we had any contracts for Val, Lath, or Tylo because we've got to be swinging around those. And uh, But you'll notice that we're not in orbit around Jewel right now. Actually, we are suborbital still. We still have an aerobraking periapsis. We are going to let Val boost us into a full orbit around Jewel. And so we'll only get the orbit contract portion done after we pass Val. Okay, got a good gulp of coffee in. Not much here. Um, it's just Tylo. I guess we'll pick that up. Uh, so, achieve orbit around Tylo, probably, I mean, the transmitter recover data from Tylo is the one I want to do right now, so let's just uh, pick that up so I can do that. Bob and Paul I wasn't originally intending to head out to, but maybe we will have enough, oh, we've got another scientific data from space around Joule, okay. Uh, so we'll be able to do that, we will be able to do... Well, maybe we'll be able to do something around Bob and Paul. We might as well pick it up anyway. It never expires, so we'll have plenty of time. Okay, well, time for the Val swing by. Unfortunately, we don't have a contract to do there, so instead of doing a GUI experiment or a Science Junior there, I will reserve those for the ones that we do have contracts for, and instead I will do a temperature scan if possible. Okay, so this is our approach to Val, and we need to make sure that we aren't so... Well, it might take a lot to... let's see. I think it takes too much to correct it here. Because inclination changes around gravitating body is not a good idea. Better, better to do it once it's boosted our orbit and we'll do it in space away from Val. Okay, so I'm going to leave it be and uh, we'll just let it boost our orbit for a sec. Then after we pass it we'll probably be able to do an inclination change around here. Uh, well, more like around here. Okay, let's pass Val. At periapsis, I'm going to do a temperature scan. Up, oh, can't be done right now. Oh well. So we'll just swing by. I want to reserve the science junior and goose for the stuff we have contracts for, like I said. So, Val's given us uh, an unfortunate perturbation to our orbit. This sort of thing. I want to hit Lath next. Well, you know what? Our contract is for Tylo. Lath is generally an easy one to hit anyway. That's too much. But then maybe Lath would be a better candidate to boost our orbit too. The trick to going between the moons of Jewel is to just use them to do all the all the work. And so here we see a potential lathe encounter. And all we need is to finagle it just a little bit. There is a way to plan all this, by the way. You can figure it out so that you get into order on Jewel and hit all three at exactly the right time so that one will slingshot you to another to another without any problem. Okay, well that's Tylo. So we've got a Tylo encounter. Gives us an even worse inclination, so I want to fix that, but not there. But I keep saying that and I keep ending up with worse stuff. Okay, well that's flatter. Uh... We're trying to get to Bop and Paul though, and this is too much too much juice in our orbit to hit those guys. That's Paul right there. Go 
that seems a little bit more doable. So we'll have a tyloperiapsis there. So we're going all the way out, almost hitting Bop, except a totally bad inclination. And then we're swinging by Tylo. This is possible because we're hitting Tylo at our ascending node. We're not actually at the same inclination as Tylo. We're not matching Tylo's inclination at all. It is simply because we are crossing Tylo's orbit right at the correct point, And Tylo is just bringing us in. Okay, and then it's uh, hopefully going to flatten our orbit a little bit. We could probably do a little bit better than that. Okay, so this will cost us about 300 meters per second, and we need to do it in an hour. We should have gotten in orbit around Jewel by now. Yeah, we've fulfilled that contract, but we need to transmit or recover some scientific data from space around Jewel as well. And I, I'm... Oh, it did allow me to do a temperature scan. Well, that's that's very good. Very convenient. Thank you. Got a... Okay. Mm -hmm. That's better. Okay. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, so our periapsis around Tylo is a little bit high. We've fulfilled that dual science data contract. Uh, Tylo, we we need we'd like to achieve orbit, but that's probably not going to be doable. We'll see. But it just says scientific data from space around Jewel doesn't matter how high we are. Okay, so one day six hours. That's well before our the return of Lemdorf Kerman. Okay, so we have to preserve our swing by of Tylo in order to get the resulting orbit which is nice and flat and gives us a good chance at hitting Paul. But let us just check out what it would take to get into orbit around Tylo here. Okay, it looks like about 800, 900 and a tight orbit a thousand. So keep that in mind when you're planning your Tylo missions which are very challenging missions of course you're going to need a lot of delta V just to get into orbit and then landing is tough. Tylo's gravity is uh, comparable to Kerbin's, just a little bit less I believe, but it has no atmosphere to air break you. So you're going to end up in orbit around Tylo going very quickly, but uh, you're going to have to burn all of that off on your own in order to land. Now, let us check out some goo. Okay, and we will transmit that data from Tylo. And so we fulfilled that part of that contract. That leaves us with the Science Junior and of course the thermometer, but uh, we are too high to even contemplate doing the thermometer, I think. So on to Paul, I think is the best bet. Bop is in this inclination, so we're not going to hit that. But Paul, we've got we've got going for us quite well. So the really getting encounters with the moons of Jewel is very easy. The main trick is the inclination. All right, so Jewel's severe influence and we want to hit Paul. Our inclination difference is only 1.4, but Paul is very small. I think the best thing to do, again, you don't want to do an inclination change close to Joule, so we're going to do one from out here. Now that's going to be quite a few days, but we still got time. We're going to do an inclination change here and also try and get the timing right. So flatten out first. Okay, so here we have a closest approach. Now, if we lengthen the time, seems to drive us further apart. Ah, the life encounter is really getting in the way of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, uh, looks like we have a Paul encounter and a safe periapsis around Jewel. Let's keep it loose. All right, so let's take this approach. 11 days, still got enough time. Okay, we are a fair ways out, and here we go for this burn. 
aiming for not Jules' smallest moon, it's second smallest moon, Paul. Bop is smaller and more difficult to hit. One thing you'll notice about these encounters with Gilly, Paul, and Bop is that they're very short. So we've got about a 20 minute encounter with, with Paul here. If you're trying to approach them with an ion engine, you might not be able to do what you want to do. For instance, getting into orbit around them with an ion engine with only this amount of time might be a little bit tricky. So how much would it take to get into orbit around Paul, given our current trajectory? Notice, very, very much a polar orbit. Ah, uh, yep, okay. 1,400. Definitely not going to be doing that. Okay, but our contract allows us to get some funds for simply transmitting data from space around Paul, so let's do that. That one's done, so it's just a science junior left. Okay, sad, but uh, let's just transmit it quickly. We're going to have to come back for the rest of the science on that. Okay, so that one's done. We don't have any contract to do with lathe, but that would be a very convenient place to dump this. When I say dump, I mean use the parachutes. And it's not too far off. Let's get into general space away from, from Paul before we try and make a maneuver. Okay, so we've got something sort of forming out there. Yep, that will do it. Okay, so that will dump us into Lace Atmosphere. No contract. I mean, we could leave this probe hanging out, or we could transfer over to BOP. But I want to show off Lace. That'll give us a good tour. The only moon we wouldn't have hit would be BOP then. So you can sort of take a look how much Delta V I've used. It's way, way more difficult to get into orbit around these things, except for Leif where you can air break. The other moons are difficult to get into orbit around, but flybys are relatively easy. Leif also has substantial gravity, so you can see it does influence our orbit quite a lot. Okay, well this is not quite the trajectory I wanted. Time warping inadvisedly sort of brought me in closer. Uh, you know, splashing down on the dark side doesn't sound like a great idea. You know what? Maybe I should use air braking calculator again to orbit and then deorbit. So let me do that. Okay, I'm not too far off. I have it at uh, 24.9 and it wants 22.5. We are going very fast. No, 2,500 meters per second on our approach here. So. Uh, trying to just give a little bit of throttle here. Okay, so that should get us. Uh, I set the target apoapsis to 200 kilometers, so that is the goal. Leif's atmosphere is not as thick as Kerbin's. So every number that you have for a Kerbin, you'd go lower on lathe. Headed back up. Are we going to get the camera change? Yes, we are. Camera change for orbit. Except it hasn't actually made orbit here. There we go. So yeah, uh, clearly environmental visual enhancements adds clouds to lathe. A little bit hard to see where the land is, though. So I'm not going to try and target land. I'm just going to go for either splashdown or landing, whichever happens. Let's just make sure that we are on the bright side of things. All right. So, scenic view of Lathe coming up here. we go, you see little islands on Leith. Not much by way of huge continents. Re-entry effects. Significant drag. Which reminds me, uh, since they're going to be 
putting in uh, better aerodynamics, uh, re-entry heating, actual deadly re-entry if you will, and uh, fairings into the game in version 1.0. Perhaps I should go over the mods that uh, have been taking care of that business all this time and maybe that'll help us get prepared for what squad has in store for us the developers are going to be adding into the the full release of the game so maybe next episode I'll take on those particular mods which are in some form or another gonna be added to the game if you will not not really the mods uh, but some form of them has un undoubtedly inspired the the implementation in the game Okay, we should be low enough to deploy parachutes. Looks like we are definitely over water. Severe tiling here. Almost looks like Kerbin, right? Except for the whole jewel thing there. Log temperature here. Can we do that? Sagan C. I like that. Okay, so biomes on lathe. We've hit one of them. Okay, let's see if it survives flop. Yeah, it does. Okay. Now, the Sagan C. Oh, I won't mention it. Here. Let's just transmit. Alright, so that's done. Let's get Lemdorf back to Kerbin, shall we? Okay, well, not a bad approach. I'm not particularly concerned with returning him at, to the KSC. Let's just get him back. Okay, getting it equatorial isn't a big issue. Let's see. Periapsis in 20 hours. Can't focus on Kerbin. Come on. Oh well. Ah, uh, let's just find out. I was gonna take a look and see where we might be likely to land based on the time. You see, uh, we we're close enough to 21 hours, which means three revolutions of Kerbin plus a half. So it'll be. Um, our periapsis will be on the opposite side from where we are going to be over when we get there. On the bright side, at least we are going to be flying over on the bright side. Might be better to land in water. Lemdorf doesn't have any lander legs, does he? But uh, a little bit too late for that consideration now. Let's just hope we don't... Oh, there's water there. I don't know if we'll reach it though. Just rather not hit mountains. G forces around six. Okay, I think we're clear of the rough terrain. Oh, well, the parachutes do quite a job. Less than five meters per second already. Oh, he's still gonna flop. Okay, that's not a bad flop. Alright, let's recover vessel. Alright, there we have it. 174.6 science earned. That's just what was returned on the capsule. And uh, 2,432 funds recovered. Unfortunately, uh, pretty much like the opposite side of the planet from the KSC. 51.7% of the total value available. But most important, Lemdorf Kerman has gained 19 experience points to advance to level 3. Uh-oh, now Jeb has to catch up again. Alright, Lemdorf has clearly done quite amazing work here. Uh, and importantly, we've got uh, 1,700,000 uh, funds, so upgrading the research and development building time. And so we've got that, and we can head in here. And we can take a look. We've got a whole lot of possible technologies to unlock. But I'll save that for the next episode. We've got lots of science to spend. 
but we can't unlock all of them yet, so we'll have to pick and choose. Alright, so uh, with that as a prospect for the next episode, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.